uh, thanks the president uh, uh, to give me the opportunity and uh, leo secretary thanks very much um, so the my topic is hip dysplasia so the idea is i would just uh, uh, highlight some principles underlying how we manage dysplasia so that we open to the discussion and the discussion uh, there will be a lot of clinical cases in which the faculty will elaborate how they plan their management so this is just to lay down the basics so we all know about the crow classification and the heart of luck studies classification uh, one point the juniors may not know is uh, the crow is actually a fellow under a ranawath and actually ranawath's classification so we always put uh, crow 1 to 3 together because the principles of management are just the same whereas the crow 4 has completely different principles and must never be confused with type 1 type 2 and type 3 crow in the heart of luck studies classification uh, not uh, widely used but some people would like to call it a low dislocation high dislocation based on this classification now before we go to the established side which is the more uh, controversial side and the more interesting side i will just finish the femur off so the femur side issues are three you have increased antiversion you have cox of valga and a low offset absolutely three principles that you have to appreciate otherwise you're going to run into trouble and uh, to um, to uh, to take care of these three issues you need to have a, a stem with modularity not only modularity in version but also cranio caudal and that's what a lot of junior surgeons fail to understand these stems give you cranio caudal you can place it very high you can place it very low the cranio caudal freedom that's very important these two stems the cohn wagner and i take from nickel that uh, a, a similar stem would uh, also perform very well in uh, in writing turn i i have seen his work i have seen the people writing turn it also is another option but we don't do that option so here is a more uh, severe case of cox of valga you can see and you can see my neck cut it's about 5 cm from the lesser trochanter and if we didn't have this stem and if you use a standard stem like a croy you run into problems so that's the uh, point i want to highlight it's not only the version which everyone is aware of but the freedom to have a cranio caudal freedom to put the stem wherever you want so the esrom or the cohn wagner fits the bill very nicely so this is a case not by me i revised this case but the surgeon didn't appreciate this and so he tried to sink his, uh, his stem which was a standard stem the um, zoimula stem and you can see what has happened he exited it and then uh, ended up in a miserable failure and was referred to me and i had to revise this so this should not be done is a point for i want to highlight for the juniors now displays are comes in various forms you have varying heights you have various amount of lateralization you have varying offsets and varying amounts of displays so everything cannot be put into the same bucket you have to understand the various pathophysiology that goes on so some uh, important points very interesting points that uh, people may not be aware of So the adult characteristics when you see displays it depends on the stage of development and time of insult. You can see that when the insult develops, exactly the same thing that produces. And what is fascinating is that the socket will always be a mirror image of your head. So when you remove the head on a dysplastic and if you keep in your hand, you know that it's your socket and you know how to reconstruct your socket. So that's how it works. Now another very important point is the femoral articulation and the weight bearing pattern depends the best bone that's problem based on Wolf's law. So you know. we have to look at this uh, how the bone remodeling has occurred in the pseudo stabulum on the partially dislocated hips and uh, we have to know where the good bone is i think that, i think that's a very important principle these days the reconstruction of the uh, dysplastic socket and of course the burning issue is where to keep the cup and i think uh, we'll ask the panelists when you come to discussions that traditionally anatomic placement was uh, preferred people said that uh, you should not keep it high and usually they did put a graph nowadays people will maybe put an augment there and they try to uh, maintain the native center of the head that's what uh, traditionally done and this came from uh, a landmark paper from uh, mark pignano when he described a high failure rate with the high hip centers so he used cemented sockets in those cases and he published uh, high uh, failure rates and there are other authors like kelly and yoda who also published a high failure rate with the high hip centers now remember they were all cemented sockets and cemented sockets are of course non biological fixation and they all had a very high hip center of more than 3.5 cm and that's probably one of the reasons why they all failed now this is a case that is referred to our unit uh, you can see how the surgeon has uh, uh, you know followed his principle and he wants to put the cup where the native center is he's done his planning very rightly but things can go wrong he has got it very inferior and this patient unfortunately had to um, uh, end up with a hind quarter amputation so high hip center came to be frowned upon in hip arthroplasty Uh, because it was thought to have higher wear increased chance of impingement and higher dislocation rate how bill harris was the first one who said that's not true and he used non cemented uh, fixations and he published excellent results it's not only uh, bill harris but tanzer bosik and kobiashi also published 
that you can get excellent results with the uh, with high hip centers now we know that it's not the high hip center that matters but lateralizing the socket which is bad news so uh, we all accept now that you should not lateralize the socket it's a very bad thing but you can keep it the socket a little high nothing uh, and you can aim for a mild to moderate high hip center it makes your surgery so much simpler and you're leaving the socket in the best available bone and i think, I think that makes a huge difference two landmark papers one was in a runout group which published uh, in a long term results of uh, high hip centers and uh, excellent results at 10 year follow up the next paper from japan which uh, indicated very good results with a moderate high hip center with a 15 year follow up so these landmark uh, papers uh, sort of change the view of how we view, view things so the um, current thinking would be is that the best bone must be loaded so there's no point putting the socket in poor bone and putting a bone graft on the best available bone you'd rather put the non cemented socket in the best available bone elevated hip center is not a problem we put uncemented sockets and do it the right way directional reaming is important which i will highlight little later and avoid graft grafts do very well in the short term but in the medium term they don't have great results so uh, we try to avoid graft as much as possible structural grafts as much as possible a classical example of mine we've done hundreds and hundreds of these we put in a moderately high hip center and the socket size is same as the contralateral side and these patients do very well in long term follow up so we have to respect the native size of the acetabulum if you put a sort of a jumbo cup in this situation it's bad news and we have to preserve the bone stock in the ap and the middle lateral phase everybody knows about the uh, you know superior inferior diameter but important that you don't ream away the socket in the ap plane that's also very important so how do you know the uh, native size of the socket look at the other side so a socket in dysplasia must never be more than the uh, socket on the on the other side which is the normal side now here is a patient has referred to me the first side was done somewhere else and you can see the surgeon has respected the old rule pagnana's rule of bringing it down to the anatomic center but then he says you know in the superior inferior direction it looks okay but what we don't see on the ap x rays is that half the pelvis has been reamed away in the ap direction bad news so i got to do the other side and i suspect this is the native size of the socket and the other cup is 10 mm more than my socket so this is how we do it these days we accept a, a moderately high hip center and we preserve bone in the socket like raymond said we need to think of the next further surgery if it's going to be done so we respect the native size and preserve bone in the ap and the middle lateral plane so how do you use the reaming technique uh, if the goals of a reaming technique would be you must eliminate the need for structural autograft it's very important as i told and then it should be bone conserving there's no point reaming right into the Uh, near the bladder and putting a socket that's not good so we must be bone conserving good so if we look at the pattern anatomy of the dysplastic socket it's very interesting we all think that from a ap x ray which we always use we think the dysplasia is from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock it's not so it's like a egg that has fallen anteriorly it's always in oblique direction in all dysplastic there's a rule it'll always like be an oblong shape with the with the egg fall, uh, falling anteriorly that would be the direction of dysplasia in all dysplastic segments uh so that's how it looks there will be always a structural inferior osteophyte and then that would be the direction of dysplasia so now we prefer what we do as the pious directional reaming that means posterior inferior to anterior superior so what we do now is the traditional teaching is to remove the osteophyte uh, remove the osteophyte and then ream from 6 to 12 like in a standard cup but if you do that you ream into normal bone and you don't engage a dysplastic segment which is anterior superior so we do a directional reaming and that's not good so we do directional reaming we do not remove the structural osteophyte structural osteophyte is what nature has given you a good structural osteophyte instead of being superior we keep it inferior and then we start reaming from there and we go anterior superior posterior inferior to anterior superior and now we don't ream into normal bone we preserve bone but we ream into the dysplastic segment and that's how we go from posterior inferior to anterior superior we place the cup slightly anterior superiorly and we put screws so uh, the essence of uh, the directional reaming is that slight anterior superior not only superior placement of the socket but slight anterior superior placement of the socket so we have done lots on this and we haven't had a single failure of the socket in all these uh, type of directional reaming that we have done over the last uh, 15 years now dor and you have described other techniques where you go through a medial protrusio where you ream medially uh, now we advocate not to do that because you are compromising bone and it's better to do and you can see that you know in both these techniques earlier described techniques the medial bone is compromised now some may say so what if you compromise the middle bone but sometimes it gives problem like in this case shown here so we always try and keep the middle bone very very important we never ream into the middle bone but we have a high hip center and we never oversize the socket on that of the contralateral normal side now we coming to crow 4 uh, 
Uh, these principles do not apply to crow four for the simple reason you can see in this illustration that the best bone according to Wolf's law does not is not superior, but exactly where the native center is, and that's where you must put your uh, socket because that's where. So in crow one, two, three, four, you put the socket where the best available bone is. In crow one, two, three, the best bone is available superior, and in crow four, it's available at the native center, and we always want to put that. So you can see a classical case of crow four on both sides. You can see the uh, in the CD scan, the best bone is undoubtedly at the true center. And this is what we do in this case with the subprochantric shortening osteotomy on both sides. So there are principles of um, uh, managing places here. Now we'll go on to the.